the look here, the design, you know it's a Mustang. This is the basic shape and form that we've seen for more than five decades. Steve McQueen would recognize it in 1968. James Bond would recognize it in 1964. My dad would recognize it in 1970. And we all recognize it today here in 2018. That's because it's an iconic design. Cliche as that sound, it is. The long nose, the short rear deck, the nice swoop of the profile, very much an iconic look. Except this car, this Mustang, is a high performance machine like nothing we've really seen before. Uh, I mean, zero to 100 kilometers an hour in under four seconds, 460 horsepower from the five liter V8. An instrument cluster that changes uh, depending on your mood and your performance needs. Uh, an infotainment readout that does all the bells and whistles for 2018, the synchronizing of your smartphone and all the rest of it. It's an amazing car and I love it. But not simply for the obvious reasons you see here in the Mustang. Let me explain, and the story begins with something very personal. My father could never afford to own the original Ford Mustang. The pony car launched as a 1964 and a half model to great fanfare and only modest expectations. Ford had hoped to sell perhaps 80,000 Mustangs annually but sold 500,000 in the first year alone. Mustang sales got an immediate boost with a starring role in the James Bond film, Goldfinger. The new Mustang, driven by a beautiful assassin, raced James Bond's Aston Martin DB5 up Switzerland's Furka Pass. Brilliant product placement, just brilliant. Steve McQueen jolted Mustang sales more with the 1968 movie, Bullet. He shredded the streets of San Francisco in a Mustang GT Fastback, perhaps the most memorable car chase in cinematic history. More brilliant product placement. My dad, though, was no James Bond, nor was he Frank Bullitt. He drove a homely little 1960 Ford Falcon to work with its 90 horsepower straight six engine and three on the tree shifter. His Falcon had an unimaginative design, a kitchen white steering wheel, a steel dashboard, and seats covered in a crunchy vinyl. He was a mid-level manager in a gray flannel suit, a World War II veteran raising a family on one paycheck. That Falcon, that's what our family could afford. This is where the story gets very interesting. In late 1969, my dad got a promotion and a raise, and he promptly lost his mind. The Falcon was replaced by an American Motors muscle car called the 1967 Rambler Rogue. It had a cream convertible top, and under the hood was a 290 cubic inch V8, a monster of the day. The Rogue Ragtop was American Motors' answer to the Mustang, but far less common. AMC produced fewer than a thousand of them in only one year of production. The Rogue had a novel cachet that caught my dad's eyes. For my dad's generation, the greatest generation, the Mustang spoke to dreams and aspirations being realized after fighting a war, enduring the Great Depression, and suffering through the oh-so-dull 1950s of Diefenbaker and Eisenhower. Ironically enough, the original Mustang was in fact a dressed up Falcon created on a shoestring to satisfy the notoriously penny pinching Ford Motor boss of the day, Henry Ford II. The Mustang would not have been possible without the homely Falcon. I thought of my dad when I picked up this yellow beast for a test. He would have loved it. The 2018 GT is crazy fast and modern. Ford has developed a new 10-speed automatic, but I prefer the 6-speed manual gearbox even though 0 to 100 is faster with the auto box, and the auto box is slightly more fuel efficient. The manual though, it's Steve McQueen in concept, but refined, more, more Thomas Crown than Frank Bullitt. That said, rev that V8 hard and the power hits tsunami-like, and the sounds are beautifully loud and mean enough to scare puppies and make children cry. All that bombast comes alive beyond 2500 RPM. 
The downside is weight. This 5 liter sits all of its heft over the front wheels and understeer tells you so in tight corners. A new MagnaRide damper option for the suspension is a must. It automatically adjusts to road conditions and your driving, which is ideal in such a heavy, powerful rear drive coupe. Refined is a good word for the cabin too, especially the snazzy, all digital, completely customizable instrument cluster. You can dial up personalized displays for normal, sport, and track mode. The My Mode memory function lets you save favorite drive settings, suspension and steering preferences, and such. You can color coordinate the cluster and flick from twin round dials to a strip style rev counter, depending on whether you're in normal or sport. The heated and cooled high back leather seats are excellent. The rear is cramped, but okay for a 2 plus 2 coupe. Ford Sync Connect is easy to run through the center stack screen and everything is smartphone compatible. But it's a muscle car, not a sports car, it's not a Porsche, it's a Ford, a Ford Mustang. And my dad, he would have approved. For high performance cars, 